on today's show, a North Yorkshire speciality that's been feeding members of a farming family for four generations. We needed a dish that could take to the fields when it was threshing time and harvest time. An Arabic recipe from the 1920s that brings back memories of Kuwaiti grandparents. The thing it really reminds me of is going to visit my grandmother and grandfather. We'd go there quite often for like Sunday lunch and the smell of like the dried lime and the cumin and all these smells. And a Sardinian fish dish that dates back 80 years and was the staple diet for a family of fishermen. We always had fish in the family. Fish for breakfast, fish for lunch, fish for dinner. <laughs> Welcome to There's No Taste Like Home. I'm Gino De Campo and today I'm in Harrogate, North Yorkshire. This town has rich tradition for food and drink, famous for its tea room, harvest spa water and of course, fire stopping. I've got three wonderful cooks with three amazing family recipes, but can they step up to the plate when they're facing a professional kitchen? I bought them in this wonderful restaurant where in a matter of hours they'll be cooking lunch service. So restaurant check, local dishes check, now it's time to go to meet our home cooks and see what's on the menu. Sheena Nicholson is baking great grandma Connie's sausage plat. Sarah Jafar is making great grandmother Latifa's lamb murag. And Mario Olianas is making nono Mario's Sardinian mullet. Guys, welcome to the restaurant and of course, look at that, our professional kitchen. How do you feel? Good, oh, good. A bit nervous, but good. We need to get on now with all the preparation, make sure that you're ready, okay? Because your dish is going to have to look absolutely perfect on a plate. So off you go, that's the kitchen <laughs> and keep smiling, enjoy, enjoy. I think they look nervous. Nervous or not, let's find out how our first cook makes her dish at home. Sheena Nicholson is a 56-year-old caterer from North Allerton, whose three grown-up children have flown the nest. In their place are her two faithful companions, Bob and Harvey. On the menu today is her family favourite, great-grandma Connie's sausage plat. Whenever Sheena cooks this meal, it reminds her of her childhood growing up on Old Blackberry Farm. Her great-grandma Connie used the farm's fresh produce to create this hearty dish. I'm going to make Grandma Connie's sausage plat. I feel quite privileged in the fact that um, I can cook this dish and that I'm allowed to serve it and cook it and that my family, my friends enjoy it and that we managed to keep it going over the years, really. Um, great heritage. First, I chop up an onion very finely and do the same with some local closed-cut mushrooms. I started making this dish when I was about seven I attempted it and about ten I had it sort of perfected, really, and it was expected that uh, I had the tea ready. You want it so that your onions are cooked. Um, the mushrooms will cook within the dish, but just nice like this gives it a flavour um, if you cook them together. Traditionally, my grandmother would have used short crust pastry. I'm using puff pastry. The thing is, with the puff pastry, it's great, it's economical, uh, and it saves a lot of time. There we go, we're about at the right size there. If you keep it into a rectangle shape like that, it's much easier to work. When the mushrooms and the onions are ready, I place them down the centre of the pastry, ensuring it's all nicely in place and neat. Next, take a local high-quality black pudding, crumble it up and place it on top of the cooked vegetables. The black pudding traditionally used to be made on the farm, uh, so it would be very good quality and it would be quite freshly made, it was nice. I mean, these days we obviously have to buy it in, but we do try and buy it locally, so hopefully uh, the quality is similar, but it won't be exactly the same. Your sausage meat, make into a long sausage type shape and uh, put it on top of it, fairly even if you can do. Traditional type sausage meat is the best. Then your Wensleydale cheese is crumbled on top of that. And I'm now going to sprinkle on some fresh sage. Generally they used to make quite a bit that would be almost like eight slices on here. Four you'd have for your tea on an evening, the next four you'd have uh, the next day for your lunch and then cut the pastry into one inch strips all the way down on both sides. Then after that you egg wash the edges of them about an inch in. Then start beginning plaiting. 
just bring one side over the other all the way so you've got it slightly, it doesn't have to be overlapping, just meeting. Family meals to me were really, uh, the whole family sat down at meal time. It was, we didn't have snacks, it was a matter of three meals a day. And so you were hungry and you were ready for your meals. We think it's a good dish and it would be really, really nice for the British public to taste it, to try it and enjoy it. That's it, now we're going to put it onto the tray. Then I'm going to egg wash it. There we go, that's your completed dish. I'm going to put it onto the top shelf for 30 minutes. OK, I'm just going to knock up the red currant and red wine sauce to go with it. Simply take three tablespoons of red currant jelly, about a cup of red wine, and then maybe half a pint of hot water. You can add a couple of spoonfuls of gravy granules. Now the plate should be cooked. Cut it into chunky slices, sprinkle it with watercress, and then pour over the sauce. That's Sheena's great-grandma Connie's sausage plat, a delicious dish with a fascinating heritage to match. Tell me a little bit more about this dish. I mean, how old do you think this dish has been in your family? Well, I know it's, it's three generations from me. So sure. your mum, your grandmother... And my great-grandmother. Great-grandmother. Sheena's great-grandma Connie lived her whole life on Old Blackberry Farm in the heart of the Yorkshire Dales, and sausage plat was her favourite recipe to feed the family. Great-grandma Connie passed the recipe down to Sheena's parents, Jean and Henry, who in turn taught it to Sheena. We needed a dish that could take to the fields when it was threshing time and harvest time. They could eat for the lunches and have it cold the next day for taking it down the fields or have it lunch with pickles, things like that. We had six children sitting at a kitchen table. Okay. Just always family, friends, at least ten we'd feed. I did a lot of the cooking, I was the eldest one. For me it was really good memories. I was quite privileged in the fact that I was allowed to cook it. Us children were all expected to help with the pigs, take them to market, see what went on. So it was always fresh pork or cured pork in those days. You usually uh, cook this dish at home with your yeah. family, your friends come around. What about this paying customer? Well, I just hope that they enjoy it. And at the end of the day, it's our heritage. They'll just go and have to sit there and try it and see what they think. And But I think a lot of them will enjoy it. Gino has a fantastic chutney recipe for Sheena to try out next time she cooks the sausage plat. Now, let me show you a very easy but beautiful apple and tomato chutney, OK? These are the ingredients. Apple, tomatoes, onion, mustard seed, soft brown sugar, a little bit of cider vinegar. Simple as that. What you do, you uh, make sure you chop all the apples, the tomato and the onion. Yeah. OK, you want a little chunk like this, one, probably one centimetre little chunk. Yeah. Put them in a pan with a little bit of sugar, mustard seeds, side vinegar, yeah. okay, a couple of tablespoons of water, yeah. cook everything together. You probably want to do that for about 15, 20 minutes until it gets all nice and sticky. Yeah. Then very simply cool it down, yeah. okay, and put it in one of these beautiful jars. Of course, sterilize the jar, it's very, very important. Yeah. Put it into the jar, close it, yeah. okay, and this one will last in the fridge for a good, three or four weeks. Looks good. No problem whatsoever. Look at that. Looks good. You get all yeah. the beautiful mustard seeds in there, the tomato. Mm. Nice and sweet, because mm. I'm thinking, you want to try? Oh. I'm thinking with the pork, yeah. with the saltiness yeah. of the pork and the cheese mm. and the mushroom, nice, yeah. it really is going to lift everything up. It looks like, yeah. So you gave my apple, tomato, onions, yeah. cider vinegar, mustard seeds and brown sugar chocolate. Good. <laughs> Sheena makes a start on the red currant sauce for her sausage plat by simmering red currant jelly with a generous glug of red wine. The pork seems to absorb the flavours, seems to go well with something slightly sweet, not too sweet. So the red currant brings the sweetness in, dry red wine gives it a little bit of a bite. I don't know about you guys, but I'm starting to get hungry now. All this fantastic home cooking really excites me. Don't go anywhere because we have two more to come. Let's meet our second cook. 35-year-old Sarah Jaffar lives in Harrogate with her two-year-old daughter Mia and partner Rob. Today she's creating a Middle Eastern dish, her great-grandmother Latifa's lamb murag. This recipe was first cooked by Sarah's great-grandmother in Kuwait during the 1920s. She then passed it down to Sarah's grandma, Miriam. So today I'm going to show you how to make my great-grandmother Latifa's lamb murag. 
First of all, I'm going to take these cardamom pods and I'm just going to bash them a bit. Then put the seeds along with the cumin seeds, coriander seeds and allspice berries into a pan to toast. I've always grown up with, you know, spices being used a lot um, around the house. Not even just in Kuwaiti dishes, but in all sorts of cooking. Once they're ready, you put them into a pestle and mortar along with the cinnamon, turmeric and dried lime. Once they're well ground, put them on the lamb to marinate it. Just like any dry spice rub, really, you just want to rub it on the meat. My father would do it this way as well, and my, grand my grandmother would have done. Now, I'm using neck for this dish because it's quite traditional to use neck. It makes me think of my grandmother and the, the really happy times that we used to have, going to have lunch with her and my grandfather. Once you've removed your meat from the pan, you can add your onions and the remaining marinade mix. So I'm going to add a, a combination of garlic. So this is our mountain garlic, which they would use traditionally in Kuwait. It's garlic, it just grows wild. Kuwaiti cooking traditionally would use quite a lot of garlic. So we're just going to put it in a small bowl and put some hot water on it. I'm going to put our meat back in. Our aubergines, these chopped tomatoes, a tin of tomatoes, some tomato puree, some water in, and that's our mountain garlic going in. And I'm also at this point going to put in a dried lime. Simmer for about two hours. I'm going to get on and make the dahus. So first of all, I'm going to add chopped onions, and then we'll add our spices and garlic in a minute. I'm going to put in um, some ground cumin and also some ground coriander. So I'll put the sliced garlic in first. Then we're going to add our garlic from the garlic press. So now we just want to give this a good mix so that all the, the spices coat the onion and the garlic. I'm going to put in the chopped tomatoes. Then we can add our tin of tomatoes. And then last of all, I'm going to put some tomato puree in. Again, a good teaspoonful, heat teaspoon. And finally, add our lime. The dried lime is a really traditional thing to add to a tomato-based dish, and it just gives it quite a nice citrusy back note. So now it's ready to be covered, and that will, we'll leave that to cook for about 45 minutes. To do the rice, I'm going to start by doing the onions, and we're just going to slowly let these cook. I'm just going to add a little bit of butter, which I don't think is something my grandmother would have done, but I just think it lends a nice flavour to the dish. So now we're ready to add our spices. These are the ground cardamom. And then also I'm going to put some cinnamon in. And this time I'm going to use a cinnamon stick. And next we're going to add the water. The rice wants to be just covered by the water. Make sure your rice is nice and even. Now we're going to bring this up to a boil. And we're going to let it go quite quickly until the water disappears. There's still a little bit of water down at the bottom. Now this is the point where you want to turn it down and you want to put the lid on. Now we're just going to get ready to serve up our rice. Make sure we get lots of the nice onions. So in Kuwait the rice that sticks to the bottom of the pan is actually considered a delicacy. Now it's all ready to serve and enjoy. That's great-grandmother Latifa's lamb murag served with dahus, filfil, rice, and yogurt dressing, an exotic dish with an extraordinary heritage. Tell me about this dish. Uh, well, I think probably the first person in the family that I know of to have made this dish was my great-grandmother, Latifa. It was actually Sarah's grandmother, Miriam, Latifa's daughter, who Sarah remembers as the real champion of this special family recipe. It was just using up the food that they had around, and obviously this uses lamb neck, which is, okay. um, you know, quite a cheap, Cut. Spices, of course, very yes. Middle East. You know, partly for seasoning and partly for uh, preserving the meat, you know, to make okay. in the hot country, obviously, things go off much more quickly. So that's one of the reasons they use quite a lot of spices. Sarah's grandmother, Miriam, met and married Khalid, Sarah's grandfather in Kuwait in the 1930s. He was appointed the Kuwait ambassador to the United Kingdom in the 1960s, and they came to London, bringing this dish with them. The thing it really reminds me of is going to visit my grandmother and grandfather. They, as much as they're from Kuwait, they used to live in London like six months of the year. We'd go there quite often for like Sunday lunch and the smell of like the dried lime and the cumin and all these smells. I've 
never had the privilege of cooking with my grandmother, so I don't know exactly how she did it. But inevitably, my mother will have changed it a little bit. I use a lot more spice, she says, than okay. she does. I think because my father does it like that, and maybe I just sort of have picked it up from, from that side of the family. You know, my mother's English, they're a bit more conservative. Okay, I'm really looking forward to trying these, I have to say. Oh, good. Sara sets to work grinding and blending her spices. As service draws near, our three home cooks really have their work cut out, recreating their family favourites for the first time in a professional kitchen. Each cook is hoping that Gino might pick their dish to take pride of place on this restaurant's menu for a month. I just met two very passionate cooks with great recipe, plenty of history, but you know what? I have one more to go. So how does our final cook make his dish at home? Mario Olianas is a 28-year-old delivery driver who lives in Leeds with wife Sonia and sons Rafael and Lawrence. Mario's grandfather, Nono Mario, was a fisherman in Sardinia who would set out to sea on a Monday and then return home on a Friday. Whilst at sea, Nono Mario's mullet cooked in a bag recipe was the crew's favorite. Well, we should be starting preparing the, the mullet. This, uh, this method is like uh, my, gr my dad and my grandfather used to do it. And he just basically just see for keeping all the juice and the goodness of the fish inside the bag. Leave it parsley, lemon zest for to give it acidity, garlic, trees olive oil and white wine. And just wrap it up and we bang it in the oven. A drop for the cook. The dish what I used to eat when I was uh, you know, a little boy. It's really important to pass down to, you know, to the kids. And now we're just preparing the base for the mussel. It's really simple when plain. It's just shallot, garlic, parsley. It's a really simple dish to do and really healthy and it's a really good, good twist to, to fish and chips, you know. It's still fish and chips, but with a twist. Next, we add the clean mussel on the pan with a splash of wild one. And we just leave it then for five, 10 minutes. So now the potato and the courgettes. I cook every day. My wife, she's not that good. She's a couple of dishes, but no. <laughs> I always remember this dish when I was a little boy because, you know, being uh, like a, my father, my grandfather being fisherman, you know, we just used to eat this dish or other dish like every single day. Basically, it's peeling the potato and slice the courgette. So we can start to line the potato first. Just roughly lay the one on top of each other. The courgette, they can be even just roughly pulled so because they release quite a lot of juice. Potato courgette is basically similar to Italian lasagna. That is uh, the pecorino stagionato. It's uh, the traditional sheep cheese from Sardinia. My dad used to do like a swap. He used to give the fish and then the guy used to give him the pecorino. I just grate it on the oven top. Just basically just normal vegetable stock and just put it over the potato. What we're gonna just do, just put it in the oven, 180 for about an hour. If it's nice and soft in the middle and crispy on top, is done. Now it's time to serve up. That's Grandpa Mario's Sardinian mullet with potato and courgette bake and mussels, a delicious Mediterranean dish. Now, tell me a little bit about this recipe because I'm really interested in a good old fashioned Italian recipe. My grandfather used What's to. What's his name was? Mario. I used to go fishing and come back, you know, just grab all the fish, go back home and just cook. Yeah. Straight from the sea. Yeah. That's the most beautiful thing. My grandfather, you just uh, cook the fish in the bag. You know, the mussel was separate, and we just we put it all together. Was he know. putting wine as well? Yeah, of course. My father is still a fisherman, and when I go in holiday, I just, I'm with him two weeks just fishing. When I was a little boy, I was ashamed of my father being a fisherman, you know, because all my friends were there, who was the top solicitor, who was the But just now, because I'm growing up, I realize I'm just so proud. How? Oh, his job just is fantastic. Lots of people, they pay lots of money to do that kind of life. We always had fish in the family. Fish for breakfast, 
fish for lunch, fish for dinner. Oh, so, <laughs> it's come back after school, my wife's for dinner. Oh, fish. Papa, fish. <laughs> Does your son cook the fish? Oh, definitely. He's already learned how to cook, go the fish, scale it. He's already handling the fish. He's got no problem at all. So he can actually gut the fish? Yeah. What I want you to do for me now, I would like you to show me, yeah. OK? How do we know when you get a beautiful, fresh fish? What are the things that we need to look for? Okay. Fair, first thing, the eyes. Okay. Nice, shiny eyes. And the second thing, the smell. If the fish start to smell, it's all. I Good. always say, Good if fish. the fish smells of the sea, it's fresh. You are on a winner. Definitely on a winner. With only two hours to go before service, the pressure is really beginning to show. Our three home cooks are busy preparing their dishes, this time for a restaurant full of paying customers. Sheena has made a great start with her great-grandma Connie's sausage plat, but knows there's still a long way to go. OK, so far, got all the sausage plat made up, it's going to be put into the oven soon, so hopefully I should be on the ball. Sarah is trying to get to grips with a professional gas range. Unused to cooking on such a grand scale, she's in real danger of burning the lamb, which would spell disaster for her great-grandmother Latifa's lamb meringue. It's really difficult to get the heat right. It's either, like, really low or really high. And I was using a small pan earlier, and that's a nightmare because it's a big gas ring, and so the flame just goes either side of the pan and not kind of underneath. Mario will be serving his grandfather Mario's Sardinian mullet as fillets rather than whole fish. So far, he seems happy with his progress, but during service, he will be under the most pressure as his dish must be cooked to order. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. I'm just wrapping the fish up now, ready to put it in the oven when the customer starts to order it. I'm fine. So the menu is complete for today. Three great cooks, three amazing recipes. Now the only thing we have to do is to serve them to the people of Yorkshire. It's almost lunchtime, and as the waiting staff busy themselves putting last-minute touches to the dining room, in the kitchen, our three home cooks are flat out, trying to get their dishes ready for service. It's actually a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be, because just getting the hang of these stoves, and, I mean, I'm on my tiptoes to reach that pan at the back, and the pans are massive, and it's, it's just completely different to cooking at home. I mean, I've cooked for sort of up to ten people before, but this is just, like, on a on a mega scale, really. <laughs> Hoping they'll enjoy it as much as we did, and also the fact that it's timed and it's cooked properly. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. I'm just wrapping the fish up now, ready to put it in the oven when the customers start to order it. Tell me what you're doing now. Uh, I've put in some red currant jelly. Okay. I've let it melt. I've put in a bottle of red wine. I just want a little what bit of adjusting. Think? Not too bad. Want, not too bad. Wants a little bit of adjusting, but we'll, we'll see how we go on with it. Wants a little bit more simmering down, I think. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, I like Good. Hopefully I think it needs to be thicker. Yeah, I'll simmer it and down and bring it down a bit. Probably it's a little too sweet to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah? I think so, yeah. So maybe what we need to do, I mean, yeah. you know, this That's is your fine, recipe. Yes. I would uh, slightly put a little bit more uh, salt and pepper. I'll tell you yeah. why. Because then you have a good balance of yeah. savory. When it's too sweet, yeah. It's not really good. No, it'll knock the flavours in you. It will knock the... Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, brilliant. Will do. You know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, Super Mario! Wait, do you know What's happening here? I'm just preparing the fish, you know, el, el cartocho. OK. So just... So I'll this put... is the portion? That is the portion, single portion for the customer. So this is going to be a quite difficult one because you're going to have to think how many... You're going to have to guess, guess how, how many. many. I'm going to start, I think, with two or three. And if the next day the order starts to increase. Are you going to do a uh, check time? Yeah, yeah, I already, I already put it, of course, I, actually, I put a one. Can well, I how a, long do you reckon? Put a five minutes ago, I put a fish inside the... This is very important. Very important is now is to get this fish right, because fish is such a delicate ingredient. If we get it wrong, if it's going to get dry, I'm going to have to send it back, because you just don't get the best out of it. Yeah. See what's happening yeah. here? The flesh of the fish is still pink, still hasn't changed the color. Of course, if you serve in sushi, this is perfect. That's perfect. But we are not yeah. doing sushi, Mario. We do Italian, Definitely Italian no, sushi. no sushi. OK. Sarah, how are we doing? Yeah, good, thank you. OK, what are you doing here? That's a big batch. Yeah, I'm just uh, sweating down my onions for the rice. For the rice? Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Is it difficult to do it, big batch, 
compared to when you usually do it for four or five people. I'll, have, tell, you, I'll tell you later. <laughs> have you ever tried to do it for no. 20, 30 people? No. Okay, so we have the onion doing for the rice. Yeah. What's happening after? Okay, over here we've got, in here we've got our tomato sauce. Let me see the top. Can I? Yeah. The beautiful tomato sauce cooking down, reducing. Yeah. What have and we got here? We've got our, our marrow. Look at that. Everything bubbling away. Yeah. You know the thing that I was surprised? You haven't salted the aubergine at all. No, I didn't, no. You just leave them like that. You don't salt them, you don't roast them, you don't fry them. No. Just the way they are in. Absolutely. I have done it with them fried before, and actually I think what happens is they get a bit oily. The only thing we've really got to do left with this is just taste it and then let it cool down, Let the, take the meat out okay. and off the bone. That's, we might need a few people to help me with that. Are you confident? Yes. With a full morning of busy preparation, the hours have flown by and already it's time for lunch. Outside the restaurant, a queue of hungry diners has formed, all keen to sample our three cooks' fantastic heritage dishes. Let's hope they're ready because it's now 12 o'clock and this restaurant is open for business. With Harrogate's superb array of restaurants and excellent local produce, the people here know what good food is, so our three home cooks will have to work hard to impress them. I think it's a really interesting variation between traditional English, Mediterranean and further afield. I think the menu uh, today is quite diverse, all from different sort of regions. Um, each one sounds really appealing. Good afternoon ladies, can I leave you with the menus to have a look through? Now, before we start, what I want you to do is to serve me up one portion of your dish on a plate, just exactly the same way you would serve it to the customer, okay? I have to try it and I have to see the presentation. It's very important because I need to make sure that it looks perfect, okay? So everybody back to the station and bring me back a plate as soon as possible. By the end of service, Gino will award one dish the honor of being on this restaurant's menu for a month. His decision will look at three main criteria, cost of ingredients, preparation time in the kitchen, and the reaction of the diners. With Gino taking on the role of head chef, it's his job to ensure that every dish that leaves the kitchen is perfect. First to take the taste test is Sheena with Great Grandma Connie's sausage plat. Oh, is this yours? There we go, chef. Look at that. It looks beautiful. Presentation is great. Good. Wow. This dish is amazing. <laughs> well presented. Thank you. It's cooked really well. Thank you. The puff pastry yeah. is perfect. Yeah. Great balance with the cheese and the pork inside with the mushroom. Yeah. Is this the same way you serve it at home? Yes, it is, yes. Thank Your you. family is a very lucky family. <laughs> thank you very no, much. No, thank you. Next, Gino will taste Sarah's great-grandma Latifa's lamb morag, served with dahus, filfil and yoghurt dressing. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. Traditionally, this is how we would serve it on the bone, and I, I sort of thought maybe for a restaurant we should take it off the bone, but... Um... I don't think so. This dish has got a lot of history, yes. and I want you to keep this dish exactly the same way. Is it good? It's well balanced, Thank so you. you got the spices absolutely right. It looks good, and if I want a little kick of chili, I got it on the side. Yeah. Tell you something, this is a good dish. Oh, well, thank you very much, that means a lot. Thank you. Oh, yummy. And finally, it's Mario's turn with his grandpa Mario's Sardinian mullet, served with potato and courgette bake and mussels. Beautiful dish. Look at that. Yummy. Mm. Lovely dish. Thank you. Really, really beautiful. I'll tell you what I like. This dish tells you a story about your family. Mussels, the fish, Pressure. the fish flavor, and then you got this beautiful potato, which, by the way, are great because they're not overpowering the flavor of the dish. Grazie. You have some beautiful juices here. Can you see this? Yeah. This is golden liquid. Put a little bit of the juice on top of the fish, sprinkle of salt, job done. Good work, man. Grazie, it's Gino. Fantastico. Grazie. Gino is happy with all three dishes and allows service to begin. Thank you.
Now is when we all get serious about it, okay? And whenever I'm here and I'm shouting the orders, I need to know that you understand my orders. The only way to do it, you need to answer back to me. The ticket will come in, I'm gonna shout your dish, okay? And the only thing I want you to hear is yes, Gino, or yes, chef, okay? Yes, if chef. you need yes. a certain amount of time to finish off your dish, just tell me, Gino, one minute. 30 seconds, 20 seconds, keep me update all the time. <laughs> what can I get for you? What's that idea, sir? All right? Can okay, I bring Grandma Connie's sausage plat, please? The lamb marag, please. Let's get it in position. We got a ticket coming in. Let the theatre commence. Okay, guys, first three table in. One fish, one lamb, one pork. Yes, yes sir. Come on. Then can I have three more lamb? Yes, chef. And can I have three more fish? Say, Gino. How long for the pork? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Fish? Another five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Stay there with the pork. The lamb as well, stay there, yeah? Okay. Don't cut too much in advance. It's gonna dry inside. Okay, sir. I can smell burnt garlic. Okay, guys, one more table. Two fish, two pork, two lamb. Yes, yes chef. Gino. How long for the lamb? Okay, guys, table number 35, one lamb, four more fishes. Yes, Get those chef. fishes. As yes, soon as that one comes out, the first batch, put it, put it up in. underneath straight away. As Mario's dish is cooked to order, Gino has to hold back the lamb murag and sausage plat until the fish is ready, so the diners all eat together. That means service is dependent on Mario. Mario, See you, chef. two more fishes. Everybody's going to have to wait around Mario which I think is worth it to wait around Mario because the fish is beautiful, right? Yes, yeah. Ladies are always well prepared, the men always behind. Simple as that. <laughs> okay, guys, they come in fast and furious, all right? I need four fishes. See? How long? Uh, one minute. I don't believe you. Two, uh, one minute, one second. One second or one minute? One minute, chef. So it's good okay. that Gino. Have you got two ready? Uh, do me one more lamb. How long for the three lamb? Two minutes, chef. After an earlier battle with the gas rings, Sarah's finding it hard to maintain the right temperature of her plates, and these ones are piping hot. Your plates are far too hot, yeah? When I ask for a hot plate, I ask for a plate that can be handled by human. But after waiting for Mario, Sarah's plates that were too hot are now too cold. <laughs> This is getting uh, cold, Sarah. Your dish is getting cold. Would you serve that one to your dad? Nothing gets past head chef Gino. Look at this parsley. The only thing dead on the dish should be the fish and the mussels, not the parsley. Finally, the three dishes are ready and Gino allows them to be served to the diners. Don't give me the place to get too hot. Okay. So, now this plate is quite hot, so just be careful that one. There we are. Thank you. Okay, this is your sausage flat for you here. Thank you very much So that looks delicious, doesn't it? That looks lovely. Mario. Yeah, Chef. See you now. How long for the fish? It's coming. Beautiful. This is what food is all about. Look at that, simple flavour. Simple decoration, absolutely amazing. Can I have the lamb? Sorry, chef, did you want one more lamb? Yeah. Now, let me tell you what I like about today's service. All the dishes are actually going equally. There is no one that is standing out uh, of the menu from the other. They're all going very, very equally. One more, one less, but that means that all the dishes are well appreciated by our diners, which is great. They're all smiling, they're all laughing, chef, so one of them is happier Beautiful. than before. The dish, the fish looks amazing, Mario. Grazie. The lamb is beautiful the way you present it. Absolutely beautiful. And you carry on with the pork because it really stands out. Jolly good. Sheen is used to catering for the hearty appetites of working farmers. So there's a surprise in store when one diner is not satisfied. What's up? Uh, chef, table 28. The lady is just questioning if there's any potatoes to come with a sausage plat. She's from Yorkshire. She wants vegetable. Mario, yeah. do me a portion of your potato. Potato are arriving straight away. I have to speak to Gina about your recommendation. Oh, oh that's potatoes so good. From somewhere else. Oh, that's okay. just going to make it the perfect, perfect meal perfect. now. Problem solved, and Sheena can heave a sigh of relief. But how is the other food going down? Considering I was going to go for the mullet, I'm so glad I got this. Outstanding. Beautiful. Very tasty. Well, that's good.
the mullet is absolutely lovely. It's really, really fresh. The ingredients are obviously fresh. The mussels are amazing. They don't taste fishy at all. They're absolutely great. It's lovely and lemony, and it's like being in Italy. It's really nice. In the restaurant are some very special diners who know these dishes inside out. You must be Sonia. I am. How are you? I got Mario's permission to kiss you, eh? <laughs> by the way. Yeah. How is the dish so far? It was lovely. Yeah? It was Good? really nice, yeah. Now tell me something, have you ever been uh, um, to the fishmonger where uh, Mario's dad works? No, I've been, to, I've been to the fishing boat where okay. Mario's dad works. And? And? Exciting. Watch, have to watch when the boat comes in and they catch the fish and see what the catch of the day is. Now I want you to tell me something, but honestly, which one do you think makes the best dish? Mario's dad or Mario? Oh, that's a tough one. I got you. I have I got to you. say Mario. Every time. You're so predictable. Mario all the time. <laughs> How are you? Good to see you. Oh, what a pleasure to meet you. What a pleasure. I heard a lot about you. I heard a lot about you and your beautiful dish. You actually showed Sarah how to do it. Yeah? Good job. Do you think you can do better? No, you can tell me the truth. You can tell me the truth, Fuad. You can tell me the truth. She's a better cook than I am. See? Because that's meaning you teach her well. I tell you, Sarah, she's putting a lot of effort in this dish. She wanted to make sure that it was absolutely perfect this for you guys. Perfect, perfect, yeah. Do you think it was a good choice to leave uh, yeah. uh, the meat on yes. the bone? Oh, yes, actually, yes. That's the way to do it. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's how it's done always. With only a few tables left to serve, the cooks have managed to keep up with the pace of lunchtime in a professional restaurant. I'm very, very proud of today at Home Cooks. I mean, the dishes, they looked unbelievably great on a plate. But unfortunately, it can only be one winner. And the winner will have a place on this restaurant menu for one month. So stay with me, because after the break, I'm going to have to reveal who is the winner. This is going to be tough. It's a full house, and as a result, the orders have come through thick and fast. I'm glad we're getting towards the end of service. It's pretty hectic. And our cooks have risen to the challenge. Table number 25, done. Service is nearly over, and the cooks are all hoping that Gino will choose their dish as the winner and secure a place on the restaurant's menu for a month. OK, guys, please. We are on the last few tables. Table number 32, yeah? Beautiful, beautiful. OK, guys, the last two lamb. Tell me. A round of applause for yourself, because you really worked really, really hard. Service is finished and our cooks have done all they can to showcase their home-cooked dish. It's now up to the diners, the restaurant's head chef and manager to help Gino pick today's winning dish. I ordered pork plat and it's a beautiful taste and the sauce is just out of this world. I ordered the lamb meringue and it was absolutely delicious. The lamb just fell off the bone and the chilli salsa were just absolutely gorgeous and lovely. I really enjoyed it. You can't teach home cooking. It's something that gets passed down in families and it, it's lovely to actually come out and experience a meal like this. Well, they seem to have enjoyed them, but the difficult decision of which to pick is with Gino. Will it be Sheena Nicholson's great-grandma Connie's sausage plat? A rustic favourite that goes back many generations and was enjoyed by farmers working the fields of the Yorkshire Dales. I think they needed a dish they could take to the fields when it was threshing time and harvest time. They could eat for the lunches and have it cold the next day with pickles, things like that. Or will it be Mario Olianas and his grandpa Mario's Sardinian mullet served with potato and courgette bacon mussels? This dish was perfected by generations of Sardinian fishermen who would cook it with fresh fish straight out of the sea. My grandfather used to go fishing and come back, you know, just grab all the fish, go back home and just cook yeah. straight from the sea. Yeah. That's the most beautiful thing. Or Sarah Jeffar's great-grandma Latifa's lamb morag served with dahu, spilfil and yoghurt dressing, a spice dish that travelled 3,000 miles from Kuwait to London in the early 1960s and now reminds Sarah of her Middle Eastern ancestry. The thing it really reminds me of is going to visit my grandmother and grandfather. We'd go there quite often for like Sunday lunch and the smell of like the dried lime and the cumin and all these smells. Okay guys, have you enjoyed the food? Yeah! It was good, was it? Yeah! Well, let me introduce you, okay, our three home cooks. Please welcome. <laughs> okay? You good? Everything okay? Listen, everybody enjoyed. 
okay? You know how much I love the dishes. Today is probably the most difficult day as far as concerning me because I have to choose one of the dishes. They all looked very good. They all tasted very, very good as well. But unfortunately, we can only have one winner, okay? You are all winner already, but today, the winner of Does Not Taste Like Home is... The sausage plate. Oh, brilliant. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm thrilled. Thank you. Are you happy? Oh, of the moon. Come on, it was unbelievable. Oh, thank you. It was unbelievable. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm thrilled. Grandma Connie will be proud. Oh, I'm absolutely thrilled. I'll just love it if the British public get to know this dish, try it, taste it. Good quality ingredients, not too expensive for all the family. I'd be absolutely thrilled. Part of our heritage. My grandfather and my father should be well happy. I'm sorry my grandfather is not anymore with us anymore, but I'm sure he will be happy. It's been a great experience to be in the professional kitchen, and you know, I don't, I don't think I'll be rushing back to one, quite honestly. It's, it's, it's really hard work, but I've loved every minute of it. It's been great. Well, congratulations to Sheena and the pork plat. I absolutely loved it. Guys, join me next time as I continue my journey across Great Britain to find more home cooks with fantastic family recipe, just to prove that, as always, there's no taste like home. Well, Grandma Connie would say, e by gum, lass, you've done it, well, you've done well. <laughs>